All right, what's up, y'all? It's like a fan here. So let's talk about defense in NBA 2K21. If you're clicking on this video, you clearly know the defensive struggle in 2K21 when it comes to the sliding, shot contesting, some would say getting through screens, the fact that short players can contest tall players, the fact that post hooks, however, are literally uncontestable no matter what your height is. We all know defense in this game is tragic, and we're here to talk about it and talk about how your expectations for defense should be lowered and how you should rely on your offense a whole lot more when it comes to this 3v3 stuff. So if you're sub to the channel, you know, typical lineup as always for us. We got the play shot, prim lock, two-way finisher, kitchen at the point, dope at the lock spot, and me as the big man. Just to clarify for the pie charts, it's play sharp, two-way sharp, pure lock for anybody who's new to the channel. So for their lineup, you can see they got play shot, play shot, paint beast. This one provides a whole lot more offense, and you would think with the offensive-oriented lineup that it would struggle on defense a lot more, but... Here's what we're here to talk about. I feel like speed is really the only thing that matters on defense. I don't even think perimeter D, interior D, any of that stuff matters, especially in the stage where three-pointers rule in the first place. So I feel like lockdowns, their ability has been diminished by a lot, but would I ever come in here without a lockdown? Definitely not. It's just that I don't really play in the style of having two different point guards on the court or where we would be running wraps and stuff like that. But here's what we're here to talk about. Clearly the lockdown is making plays because you see the pure lock was getting crazy chase downs. Now you can see I had Bronze Intimidator activated right there as it popped up. And some would say that's exactly the reason I can't get perimeter contests. But I feel like I've tried the badge on Hall of Fame, Bronze, Silver, Gold. It doesn't even matter. I feel like it's all the same thing. Now, we're going to rewind this real quick and we can show you guys what I'm talking about here. So check this out. We're going to talk about defensive reactions in 2K21. We all know that is the absolute worst thing in this game. So you're going to see I do a really great job at stepping up on the point guard. He goes up for the shot, but I'm in his face and he knows this shot is not going to be made. So he hits the bailout pass, right? You can see dope drop in for the rebound. And then just like that, he bails out. Now, peep how dope is trying to turn and jump and contest this shot, but he literally cannot move for a good one or two seconds. And we'll run it in full speed right here. But pretty much what I'm saying is reaction time, whether it's on ball, off ball, anything like that, it's really what ruins the defense in this game. So again, you can see he wasn't even able to get his hand up in the first place. Shot contesting is awful in this game, first and foremost. And I made a video a couple days ago talking about like how pretty much people should just adapt to the defense and just get used to it. That was before the speed boost glitch stuff though, really, man. <laughs> like honestly, that was all entirely before the speed boost glitch and how it really ruined the game for defense. Now, I just want to explain this one right here was all defensive miscommunication. Kitchen stopped at half court looking like he was going to guard ball. Dope was trying to hold down corner to make sure corner wasn't wide open. I was trying to hold down the point guard to make sure he wasn't wide open. Big man slips down. He gets wide open. It was just all horrible miscommunication from the start. And my alternative title for the video that I was going to go with in the first place is why you can't start down 6-0 on the stage because people are going to do you like this all the time. Honestly, it all comes down to the fact that Kitchen as a point guard is a very reliable three-point threat. So you're going to see they throw a lot of double teams at him, especially at the fact that we're already down by two possessions. So you're going to see that very often. Now, I would also encourage that they don't even give up threes in the first place, but it's so much harder done than said. And really, man, like there is so many difficulties when it comes to playing defense in this game. Like you can see, I was back playing the passing lane. I just like literally didn't get anything and the big man just glides past me on the pass and he literally becomes faster as he does it. Now, they get messed up in their size defense right there. You can see the big man, he was kind of lacking and he was stepping up too far. Now you're going to see, we make the exact same mistake right here. Dope gets caught a little bit too far to the left. Point guard tries to quick stop, but he moves in. Now peep the off ball defense on the left side right here. Look at this. I mean, he moves to the top at the speed of light. Off ball defense in this game has got to be the worst thing I've ever seen since probably 2K17. And honestly, I still think it's worse than 2K17. You guys know the deal if you played it with the stretch bigs, dexing on the inbounds and stuff like that, moving at the speed of light just because of like hitting down on the d-pad or double a or double b whatever it was back in the day either way off ball defense is horrible people don't even talk about it in this game in the first place and look at this the speed boost glitch just like that dope was playing on the right side of the screen gets caught on the pick and now we're down 14 to 8 and this is why also i want this topic of the video to be about how your expectations on defense should be a whole lot lower than they probably are because it's going to look like the offense is carrying throughout the course of this game but it's just because flat out offense is easier than defense now that does not mean that your role as a defender is that much less valuable. Getting stops is still super important. It's just harder to get stops, but it's going to be that way for both teams. So that's just something that you got to keep in mind. It's, it doesn't make lockdowns completely useless. It just makes their role a whole lot harder to feel impactful, but your stops will be noticed. And so now we're back on the offensive end. So keep in mind that shot that he just took right there. Forced up a three, fade away, all types of stuff like that, even while up. Now we're going to be on the offensive end right here. Kitchen's still going to try to get his three pointers up, but... I'm just going to take the slips whenever they're there for me. If the big's going to step up and double team, I'm taking R2s. You cannot be forcing up three-pointers like they were on that possession before, especially while you're winning. Now, when you're down, that's a whole different topic. It depends on what the scoreboard is. But peep this. 
We're going to go ahead and just give him a slip, right? I almost get the passing lane. And then he forces up a two. Now, this is the last thing you want to do because we get the block. It makes them cold with the Heart Crusher. With my Hall of Fame Rim Protector, it gives us some takeover progress. Just like that, we're back in the game. I got my takeover on, all types of stuff like that. Now, I'm noticing we got the double guards on us, so I'm going to go for the slips. Kitchen tries to dot dope for the three-pointer. Low-key fire pass, but nothing there. Now, I was about to get a little hasty right there and make a bad decision, but decided to give it back to Kitchen, reset up for the slip, because obviously the contested two is not a better shot attempt than the wide open two, and I already know the situation. So, so that's why I clearly did, just didn't go up with the putback right there. But anyway, they're back on the offense. You can see, again, we're over here trying to play sides. Dope's getting caught on the screens. Honestly, to be completely truthful with y'all, it's just bad defense in the first place. Dope can play way better size defense than that. And he's just giving up a lot of three pointers. But at the same time, it's a little bit hard to. And I understand why a lot of people will say that it's hard to get through these screens and stuff like that. So when it comes to defending screens in 2K21, this is the strategy that me and Dope have. So we come out here and play sides every single time, right? But even at that, sometimes we get put in situations like this, where Dope's playing the left side of the screen, but you can see he's still got pulled in an animation to where he's fighting over the pick. And that's something that we really do not want to do when we're playing sides, because just like that, if the point guard pushes it to the left super hard, and I'm supposed to be on the right and Dope can't catch up to the left. Now we're completely screwed over. It was a horrible situation. So real quick, I'm going to run this back one more time. You guys can see it in full speed. Again, it's an animation where he's fighting over the screen. Just to clarify, he does not have any pick dodger. Neither of us run pick dodger because we play sides so often. And honestly, that animation is something you'd probably want to see if you're playing front back. But when you're playing sides, definitely not the most appealing animation that you want to see pop up. So now... This is why I say your expectations for defense should be lower, but you can still make plays if you really want to be on some crazy stuff. So right there, you can see I get the poke, going for the loose ball, get the dunk in transition. And I know we got a lot of pauses and rewinds going on in this gameplay, but I really want to explain my thought process on this play right here. So there's a lot of my mind going on right now, and I'm going to go ahead and explain it in the shortest amount of time as possible. So you can see, again, we're giving up easy, easy two. 19 seconds left in the shot clock. Honestly, we do not want to just fight through screens for 24 seconds. So if they want their two pointer, they can have it right now. We're just going to go back and forth until Kitchen gets sharp takeover. And then he's going to try his best to force a three pointer up as I crash for rebounds because, and this is some next level thinking. All right. So if you guys watched the video from a couple days ago, the scoreboard right now, we have even numbers. They have odds. The scoreboard ends at 25 and whoever has odds is the beneficiary of that thing. So we're not in a good position right now. We're really just hoping for a play like this to be made, and it changed the game completely. But like I said, say they get under 10 seconds on the shot clock, we're not going to allow this to be that easy for them. We're going to fight through screens at that point because if we can still get a true stop, it's super important. But either way, I'm still trying to put myself in play for getting a steal, whether it be for the passing lane that I was expecting or this super lucky on-ball steal that I was able to get instead. And you can see it was actually a poke animation. I didn't even actually get put into an actual steal animation. But either way, crazy pivotal play right there. Now we're up 20 to 17, a whole three points as a possession. And now we can give up twos cake i mean literally we're just gonna straight up double team like i'm playing the left side dopes on the right we're not gonna allow a three-pointer for anything right here so you're gonna see big man just runs right through and honestly i'm a little bit worried about dope dropping that much because like i said defensive reactions they're horrible in this game and just like that dope might not have been able to move to the three-point line had the point guard actually moved to his side and you can see this is what me and kitchen call testing their stupid and as offensive as it may sound it's the truth so Whenever we're on game point, whether it be 19 to 19 right now or 19 to 20, as you can see it is, you guys know the deal. If you win by two, game over. So every single time down, we're always going to set up this little slip action right here, where if the big man's hedging too high or they're playing sides for whatever reason, I don't know why you'd ever play sides when all you need is two points to end the game. So every time we do this, we're going to set up for this little lob slip. So I'm going to curl it off so that my point guard can throw it better. So there's no risk of the on ball passing lane. And then I have no worries as far as like if the corner were to drop off entirely and I can still get this lob off because if the corner dropped off, he's going to have to drop off so far that it's an easy, easy skip pass to dope. And a lot of people are going to come out here with this defensive outlook where they're going to double team kitchen up top, drop a defender down to me on the rolls and then leave dope wide open. A lot of people do that for game, but you absolutely by no means can give this up on defense on game point. This is really just a tough scene for the other team, but you can see great strategy and gameplay by me and kitchen right there. And like I said, we always, always do that. If we have the opportunity to, if the big man's going to step up at all, so I'm not saying you should camp paint entirely, but honestly, you probably should, <laughs> to be completely honest with you. Now, 
I will say, like I was saying earlier, you guys know the deal. If they were to double team Kitchen, drop one to me and make Dope shoot that three pointer for game, I wouldn't knock them for that either. Honestly, bold move, but it is what it is. Dope has like 78 three pointer or something like that. And you know, he does have catch and shoot and dimer going for him if that's the case, but Either way, you're going to want somebody who literally has gone one for two to shoot the to shoot the shot instead of, you know, an easy paint take or for someone with sharp takeover to be shooting the three. So either way, that was a great game. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, feel free to drop a like sub. If you're new, turn on the noties. Uh, good stuff. Like I said in the intro, let's try to get to 1 to 1K likes in the first 24 hours. If you made it to the end of the video, put LA in the comments to show your support to me all the way through. And feel free to leave your feedback on the topic of this video of just the whole defensive discussion. Like I said, I understand the defensive sliding and the pick dodging and the shot contesting and the fact that builds who shouldn't be able to play good defense can play good defense and how post hooks are literally uncontestable. But like I said, when it comes to 3v3 stuff, you guys got to just have a little bit lower an expectation of what you should be providing on defense because it's going to be hard to get stops they only had one turnover throughout the whole course of the game but i was able to make some big plays got one steal two blocks was able to hold entirely change the course of this game and for all those people out there who are doubting whether or not they should have been making a lockdown in the first place you can still make big impact on this game so anyway that's all for the video hope you all enjoyed none of that take it easy man peace